Hey everybody, it's me Angel Benton and it is time for another edition of Angel Sudsy Recap where we delve into the world of daytime television and we do a few reality shows on the side. I know, I'm totally behind, but whatever, it's fine. Um, I, I First of all, I want to say that the last episode that I did episode was episode 300. I've been doing this for 300 episodes now. That's close to a year. All right. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. This, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> because not only, because, you know, if you think, oh, this is just a 10-minute show. It doesn't take that long. It's not that difficult. Right. I get that. But the, I also have to watch all of the programming that I talk about. So that's, let's see, that's three hours a day with all of the other stuff. And then a half hour with Bold and Beautiful. And then a week we've got the three other shows, the house, the two housewife shows and um, Below Deck. So that's like, that's a lot of, oh my God, these kids outside, they are working my goddamn nerves. I swear to God, <sighs> let it go. Okay, so, um, so anyways, I just want to say thank you all for watching so far, those 300 episodes. That's pretty cool. Um, anywho, and I got, my face has been eaten by bugs. I've got the worst bug bites and you can't really see it, but I've got one behind my, my ear right here. I've got one on my ear right there. Can you see it? Right there. And I've got one on my arm. I don't, can you see? Wait, hold on. It's right. No, you can't really see. There we go. Right there. See that? Right there. I mean, and of course, it doesn't help that two of them are on my face. So, of course, I'm at work, you know, scratching my face like a goddamn meth addict. It's okay, though. Whatever. I could care less what they think of me at work. It was fine. Okay. And, and now I'm going to be doing it again. I hope I don't feel another one coming on. That would suck. Okay. So, here's the thing. Last weekend, I had the pleasure of doing the General Hospital Fan Club Weekend. So, I, I know I did a convention of them earlier in March, which was exciting, but this was a little bit different. There were a lot of people, it was kind of different. So here's the thing, there were a lot of people that were there, there were a lot of people that were at both, but there were a lot of people that weren't at the Fan Club Weekend that were at the convention, and there were a lot of people that weren't at the convention that are at the Fan Club Weekend. <laughs> So, it's, it was kind of a mixed bag. What I did find interesting was that they just had Sonny, Michael, uh, Olivia, not Olivia Jerome. Sadly, Olivia Jerome was not at either of them. And, because uh, you know I love that bitch. I would have loved to have met Olivia Jerome. Uh, that would have been awesome. It's okay, though. Um, so, they had Michael, Olivia, um... Sonny, Dr. David Bench, who really most people know as being Max Holden from One Life to Live. Let's be honest, right? Um, oh, yeah, and he had, he was married to Gabrielle. Oh, I miss Gabrielle. Whatever happened to her? Okay, anyways. Um, and they also had uh, Dr. Finn. And they had one other person. And they were the only people that actually addressed the crowd. So, oh, son, um, uh, Scotty Baldwin. So that was a little bit kind of odd that they had all these actors there and, and not really anyone really did the Q&A portion, which is fine, though. I got to ask them my questions anyways, whatever. So, um, so, okay. So the day started with this breakfast with Nancy Lee Gron, who plays Alexis. I love her. I love her. I love her. I think she's great, right? So, um, but... You know, the only question I had for her was, does she feel pigeonholed to Julexis, right? Because if something were to happen and William DeVry weren't to be on the show anymore, you know, she, what would happen to Alexis? Does that automatically mean that they're not going to be really writing for Alexis? And she said she's not as tied to the show, to the coupling, as he is. So, um... 
And and I kind of agree with that because she's been on the show nonstop for like 20 years. So obviously, you know, there's plenty. But I don't like, I, I mean, don't get, okay, we'll, we'll get to Julian in a second. Trust me, I will, I will get to Julian in a second. But I just don't like, I don't, I just would rather see her with someone else. And it has nothing to do with the fact that Julian is a crime boss. I mean, she's just been there, done that. She's been with him so long. I don't, I, I don't believe in the whole soulmates or star-crossed lovers or I'm just, I'm totally not a Julexis shipper. I really am not. I would like to see her with someone completely, and I told her too, I was like, I want to see you with someone completely different like Griffin. I want to see you cougar it up and be with someone that everyone would, and, and the fact that she would be with Duke's son would totally drive Julian crazy. I'm sorry, I am a Grifexis fan. They've never even met, I don't even think, on the show, but I think that they would be a good pairing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep talking about it until I make it happen, I'm not going to lie. But, and not just that, but honestly, don't you think then if Julian were so tied to Alexis, don't you think for Julian's sake that they should maybe have Julian go out with someone else, right? They need to start exploring other options because, you know, they're not the only people in town. Anyways, but she was very sweet. She was really nice. Uh, I'm doing another event with her in November here in Vegas. She's actually coming to Vegas. I'm so excited. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have a great time with that. Okay, so that was cool. And I met my friend, new friend Charlotte. Shout out to Charlotte. I met my new friend Charlotte. And I, my new friend Jill, actually. I met her at Nancy Lee, um, Nancy Lee's breakfast. So I want to shout out to Jill. And I want to shout out to my friend Charlotte, who was my buddy for the whole day. She just walked up to me and started talking to me. And we just became friends all day. So she's great. Okay, so the all the actors came out, and you know, besides that whole little Q and A section, there was also a time where there was a point where you could go talk to the actors and get your pictures taken with them, right? So I went and got for my the very literally the first person I went to was Risa Dorkin. She was not at the convention. She was one of those ones that was just at this uh, event, and she. It might be my new favorite person. She's pretty fierce. So I asked her, I was like, you know, at the convention, Roger Howarth, who was not at the fan event, um, was talking about how much he admires you as an actor and the acting choices that you make. Do you want to see more scenes with Amy and Franco? And she's all, hell yes. So it was, that was really cute. I mean, she's just, she is the best. I love her. And she's beautiful. She's great. I think she's incredible. Love her. You know who else I love, actually? Um, well, okay, wait. We'll get to who else I love in a second. So after I was done talking to her, then I made a beeline to Dylan, Robert Palmer Watkins. I'm not going to lie. He's really cute in person. But he's a little bit, and, and I'm not saying this in a bad way. I'm just saying this as in I'm a, a, a he's a little skinny, so it made me feel like a huge fat cow, right? Um, so, but he's, I mean, just perfectly proportioned, just beautiful and just beautiful face and, um, so nice and so sweet. He I asked him, I was like, who, cause I told him he was the best dressed guy at the daytime Emmy awards. And I was like, who made your suit? And he said, Mr. Turk. So if you have a suit, Mr. Turk. And if I'm going back to the daytime Emmys next year, Mr. Turk, I'm going to go see, I mean, I probably won't be able to afford it, but you never know. Maybe he has rentals. We'll see. Okay. So after I talked to Dylan, that was cool. Uh, and I also want to say how much I love both Diane and Obrecht. I love them both. They are the best. And the best part about Obrecht, uh, uh, Kathleen Gotti, I was like, I know your accent isn't, isn't your real accent, but you do it so well. I love it. And I just want to know, I was like, who do you think, who do you want to be your next love interest? And she was like, she was basically like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of would like to see Obrecht and Julian hook up, to be honest with you. If I'm going to be honest, I, I think that it would be kind of kind of cool, right? And Diane, I love Diane and Carolyn Hennessy. And I was like, you know, because she was like, I really would love it if they would make Spinelli my son. And I was like, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that would be great. Good television. I'm right there with you. So that was cool. Um, so then, okay, so I, I talked to a bunch of people, like I talked to, um, uh, Christina, 
I congratulated her on her Daytime Emmy win. I talked to Ned. I told him how much I loved him in this musical. He was in this random musical 20 years ago that he was, you know, shocked that anyone saw. But he was so good in it. It was called Hurry, Hurry, Hollywood. They wanted to take it to Broadway and never ended up going. But you never know. Maybe, maybe if I keep talking about it, you never know. Stranger things have happened. So, you know, I went, I talked to the, once I talked to those specific people, I talked to people based on how long their line was, right? Because I knew that certain people would have extremely long lines. Valentine had a very long line. Um, uh, Dr. Finn had a very long line. Sunny's line was ridiculously crazy. And so was Julian's. Now, remember, I'm not a Julian fan, right? I'm not a Julexis person. I don't mind Julian. I like Julian. He's fine. Um, but girls, let me tell you, in person, he is fine. Fine. He is beautiful. I mean, big old pecs, big old arms, nice tight butt. I'm sure you know, he's got a six pack under that shirt. I mean, he, I, I, now, I was a little bit lit. I had three Bloody Marys, so I was a little bit lit. But you know what? I'm I'm not going to lie. He was mighty fine looking. So I, And he was so nice. And that made him even hotter. I love when people are nice. Because if he was kind of a dick, then that would make him not as cute to me. But he is really super sweet. Made him way cuter. And I told him, I was like, I loved you as Storm on Bold and Beautiful. And that's true. He wasn't on the show that long, but he did great when he was there. I loved it. I loved him on Bold and Beautiful. He was great. And he was like, you know, he really enjoyed being on CBS. They they were a good family. And it was really cool. You know, we had, we had a little moment where I got to talk to him and took some pictures with him and laughed with him. He was great. I loved him. So anyways... But I had a really good time, and I've got more pictures coming, so thank you so much for logging on today. I do appreciate it. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Angel Benton. You can hashtag... I know I didn't talk about the show at all this week, really, except the convention, but, I mean, I wanted to talk about the convention. Uh, the, the fan event. Sorry. Um... So anyways, uh, thank you so much for logging on. Uh, you can hashtag GH to talk about GH, or you can also hashtag... R-H-O-A-K-L, or Real Housewife Shit, to talk to Real Housewives of Auckland, because I'm doing that next. And uh, you can hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel to get my YouTube videos sent to your inbox every single day. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out, and wubba, wubba, wubba.